So today I'm in conversation with John Whelan, Associate Director at the Corporate Research Forum, and Rick Norgate, Head of Product Marketing at SD Works. And we're going to be talking about the future of work and changing working practices. So we're talking about the future of work, and it's very difficult to predict the future of work. Mm -hmm. But one thing I think we can say is that the demographic trend is a, a very big issue. And this is the aging population. Um, one of the um, problems with that, I think, is that employers haven't got their a handle on it yet. So, you know, can you give us a bit of information about that, that aging demographic? And also, what do you think employers need to, mm. to do? What does HR need to do in terms of getting ready to navigate it? Yeah, well, I think you're right. There's been a lot of talk about millennials, and that's important. But uh, the biggest single thing that's happening in the demographic profile is the aging of the population. People are working later. The size of the older working population is growing. Retirement ages are starting to grow again, having fallen in the 80s and 90s. Um, and I think employers have to get used to having that whole spectrum of workers in, in the workforce, from maybe 16 to, to 70 in the workforce, and how we get generations to work well together. And when we listen to what CEOs are interested in, again, the emphasis tends to be on finding new talent and talent attraction, as opposed to maybe working with the talent that we've got, developing the talent, reskilling for the future challenges. Mm. And, and in, as well as that at the moment, we've also got the issue of uh, a sort of slowdown in productivity and, and in economies generally. Mm. Um, in fact, uh, I understand that some economists are saying we may never see the growth that we've seen in the last couple of centuries again. Yeah. Um, do you think that's going to hasten the adoption of technology in, uh, in businesses, or do you think that uh, this robot revolution, <laughs> the rise of the robots, is actually overstated? I think, I mean, investment in technology is a factor in productivity. Um, we should see productivity rise as we invest in technology. Probably we haven't seen enough investment yet, particularly in Western mm -hmm. Europe and in the UK. Mm -hmm. So I think that will continue. Um, the productivity puzzle is you know, is more complicated than that. We've seen this kind of stagnation in Western, Western Europe and lots of people grappling with that. Mm. I think that is a combination of investment in new product development and technology and in people and people and leadership in, in you know, extracting productivity, if you like, from the organization. Yeah, yeah. And do, do you think HR's ready for this new technology? <laughs> It's a big ask, I think. Yeah. I think we've all got to upskill ourselves in you know, what's out there, how yeah. we can use it, how you can combine different technologies from the big systems to the small flexible tools that are now available for mm. talent management, talent acquisition, uh, and so on. So I think it is an ask for HR people, but we've been running some events with HR people lately, and I'm, you know, I'm delighted by the way HR people are embracing that challenge mm. and mm. Uh, have showed up in numbers to discuss that at our events. Mm. Um, certainly, we are seeing some new technologies coming into the, the working uh, environment anyway. Um, and sometimes that can be quite challenging. But one of the ways I think it's been very interesting is in the rise of self-employment, because technologies are either um, allowing a platform sort of based economy, a platform based business, or just the fact that people can work more at home because they've got the technology with them. Um, I wonder what you think that means for employers, Rick. Okay. So it's a good question. So mm. I think you know technology is making it easy to work remotely, different hours. Um, you know, if you take our business itself, you know, a high portion of our people are home-based, and they travel around. And things like Skype, things in the cloud, allow you to obviously connect as if you're still in an office. So that's obviously good on one side. And as you say, you know, more and more people wanting flexibility in the workplace. So you know, the, the office tools are there to do that now. The technology is there. Really, the interesting thing now is what can HR and payroll functions do to support that flexibility further. Mm. And do you think they're doing enough at the moment? Uh, I think I think it varies. So I think from a HR point of view, if you look at pure HR, you know th there is a lot of work going in to try and make it flexible for their employees. So you know either through flexible working, mm. different shifts, shift swaps. I think even the technology to back that up. The really interesting piece though is when you come to payroll. Yeah. So you know if you look at uh, you know, the younger generations coming into the workplace, they want the flexibility around their payroll um, and they want to get paid more frequently than maybe they can do. Maybe monthly is not enough. They want it daily or weekly. Most payroll functions aren't set up today to do that. So we did some research on that. But actually, the good thing is payroll professionals do realize that is the way they need to go. I think nearly 70% of the people we asked recognize that greater flexibility within payroll is going to be key in, in the coming kind of years. Yeah, that's interesting. And, and what about in HR? Because one of the implications of this uh, automation is in um, in 
job roles and, mm. and tasks being taken away. So there's yeah. now a, a need to sort of look at roles differently, isn't there, redesign them. Yeah. Uh, what have you found on that? I think that's what the, um, the research is telling us, that um, technology may not eradicate whole jobs, whole roles, but may um, automate tasks within roles. So that does lead HR back into the world of job design, which has almost mm. become a lost skill. But mm. we, you know, we need to get back there with some serious redesign of jobs so that we can let the robots do the elements that they can do and the people do the bits that they do best. Yeah. And, and is the capability there, or do you think HR needs to sort of relearn this? It may be a bit of relearning and some reskilling yeah. for the function. Um, but, you know, it's a core discipline of HR, and we should be right in the middle of that, leading that debate about about mm. jobs and their design. Yeah, yeah. And, and SD Works has just produced some uh, research, and within that you talk about the personalised employee experience. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about what, what you mean by that? Sure, and it kind of goes back to what I mentioned a moment ago. So I think, you know, if you look at people in their personal life at home, you know, everything can be very personal on demand these days. From what you watch through Netflix and Amazon, it's all kind of recommended based on previous history, mm. through to the kind of shopping habits and buying habits. When you come to work, it's then a very kind of standard process. So one of the things that we've seen is many businesses shift from a weekly payroll to a monthly payroll because mm -hmm. uh, it's easier for the business to manage a payroll once per month. But that can put huge significant impact and strain on the employees who maybe need to get paid weekly or more frequently. Um, so it's trying to figure out how can we make an experience for each employee that's manageable by a company and it's not too complicated but will actually work for them in their circumstances. Mm. And I think, you know, uh, you mentioned a moment ago about the kind of multi-generations in the workplace. That's always been there. Uh, what we're really seeing is it's a, just a bigger gap than ever before. You know, people are starting at the kind of same age they always have, but they're working much longer now. So there are more generations and it's a wider spectrum and trying to cater for all of those different groups with their different requirements you know, is a challenge. It is and a that challenge. is definitely where HR and payroll mm -hmm. can and will step up to kind of help those people. Yeah. Okay. So what do you think are the core challenges that HR leaders in particular are facing? Well, I think firstly dealing with the technological revolution that we're all seeing and the, and the digital mm -hmm. digitization of businesses. A uh, link to that is how do we build in agility um, to our organizations and hence through that productivity mm. and maybe thirdly um, designing appropriate uh, employee value propositions which might need to be different for different environments yeah. and how do they embrace quite a mixed workforce now some which are core workforce and some which are the extended enterprise. What do you think for payroll professionals what sort of core challenges are they going to have to face? I, I think payroll professionals is obviously ongoing legislation you know that is getting more and more complex all the time you know mm. every year the, the legislation's going through to actually make employees' lives better, it's harder for payroll professionals to manage. So that's obviously going to be ongoing and it always has been for, for decades. But I guess one of the biggest challenges facing payroll is it's often thought of as a kind of a transactional function. Mm -hmm. It's actually much more than that. You know, payroll needs to have a strategic place at the table along with HR. Because ultimately, you know, paying people is one of the mm -hmm. key things within your business. You know, the research that we did showed that if you don't pay people correctly, over 40% of those people would consider leaving that business. That could be your top talent walking mm -hmm. out the door. Um, and then on top of that, you know, one of the kind of key trends that you see across kind of all, um, all the generations now is this financial wellness. That is kind of high on many CEOs' agendas. Mm -hmm. Payroll can absolutely play a part in helping employees you know, manage their financial wellness, come to work motivated, come to work in a good frame of mind. Whereas, you know, if they're worried about money, they're not necessarily coming to work in the best frame of mind. And yeah. payroll are a key kind of player in helping employees and businesses with that. Mm -hmm. And so those are the challenges. Um, but in terms of competencies, what do you think the main competencies that um, HR needs to build into its teams are in order, to, order for them to thrive, not just survive, but thrive mm -hmm. in this new workplace? Well, certainly mastering that technology. And yeah. we have seen now, and through our recent CRF events, we've seen uh, people talking about more IT skills within the HR function itself. I think productivity, the productivity challenge, and what does that mean for our business, and what, how does HR influence productivity or work with the business um, to uh, influence productivity are probably uh, two of the major challenges. Okay, and what, and what about for payroll professionals? What sort of competencies will they need to, to, to sort of design and deliver now? I think the first one is really all based around the fact that payroll seen as quite traditional, very risk averse. You know, we're going to have to get more flexible. So, you know, with more generations in the workplace, we're going to have to demonstrate more flexibility to meet those demands. Uh, and that obviously doesn't always go hand in hand with that kind of risk averse 
nature. So developing that balance between the two were really important. And I think from a, a, a second point of view, as I mentioned before, it's been much more strategic. So it's rather than just thinking of transactional accuracy of payroll, it's what else can we do with payroll to actually support the employees and give them a really kind of good experience at work. Well, there's a lot of challenges, <laughs> um, but also lots of opportunity, I think, for, for HR, core HR and also for payroll. So I just want to say thank you very much for your time today.